Baptist Church Collingwood. It's good to see you. And uh, I know we're not many. Uh, still, people are a little bit afraid of coming out, but also um, I know that the sons are not well. Sandy has a bit of a, a cold this morning, so she felt it best not to come. And, uh, anyway, it's good to see you all. Uh, welcome back. Roy, Maggie, and your mum, and uh, welcome. We're going to sing the hymn, Oh, That Will Be Glory.
this morning. And uh, I know each of us have different matters that we want to bring to the Lord. There is much that we can praise Him for. And I didn't say anything really wrong, but I have to say congratulations to a couple here who uh, celebrated 60 years of marriage this past week. And I look around, it's all of us. Congratulations, Lord. So we have so much to be thankful for, and in these strange days that we're living in, um, we have much that we need to be praying about and praying for. So let's individually bring our prayers, and then I will, uh, then I'll, I'll pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day and for this opportunity of coming and bringing our prayers to you. We come through that new way that was opened for us by your Son, who is our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your great love for us, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit who is present with us. Lord, you've heard our prayers, and we pray for each other. Lord, we pray for every member of First Baptist. You know each and every situation. We pray especially for, for Joyce Maxwell, for Doug Fortune. Donna Muller, Bob Lavella. Lord, we just commit them to you and ask that you will work within their lives and help them to know your presence and know your healing touch. And for others that are unable to join us, we commit them to you and ask your blessing upon them. Lord, as we come, we pray that we might come to you and be open to you. Help us to realize that you are in control of all things. And so we just commit ourselves to you. We pray that we might be a witness to others around us, that day by day your light might shine through us as we live our lives for you. And Lord, as we bring our individual prayers, we pray for our nation, we pray for every level of government. Lord, we ask that we as believers might continue to have the freedom to worship, that freedom that has been and is being still uh, a little bit uh, restricted. Lord, help us to recognize that you are not restricted, that we can meet with you wherever we are. And we, for those who will be joining us by way of the internet, we ask, Lord, that they might know your blessing too. So we bring our prayers and praise to you in the name of your Son, who is our Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading this morning is Isaiah 40. Uh, it's a rather long passage, and uh, I'm sure it's familiar. It's one of those passages that uh, we hear excerpts from regularly. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain shall be made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged places at plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all the people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry out? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of our God endures forever. 
you who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the Sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with a breadth of sand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on the scales, and the hills in the balance? Who can fathom the Spirit of the Lord, or instruct the Lord as his counselor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him, and who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge, or showed him the path of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him all nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. With whom then will you compare God? To what image will you liken him? As for an idol, a metal worker casts it, and the goldsmith overlays it with gold, and fashions silver chains for it. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned about the circle of the earth, and his people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught, and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown. No sooner do they take root in the ground, and he blows on them, and they wither. The whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Oh, who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them forth, each of them by name, because of his great and power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary, and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and yet men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary. They will all walk and not be faint. God will bless the reading of his word to us. Now we sing the Lord and Father of our
I've set this up so that you can see some differences uh, between the different. Uh, let me just pick out one of these. Those are the sheep that uh, you encounter in Wales. And when you see the sheep, that's what you see is sheep. Um, where I lived in Wales, in Bridgend, uh, there was a mountain pass called the Bull. You travel up the valley, and then you come to the end of the valley and you continue on uh, a road that takes you to the top. And at the top of that, you can look down into the the Rhonda Valley, and then on the other side is the Adam Valley, on the other side is the Ogmore Valley. But on top of that, um, uh, on top of the book, this is what you find. They look a bit distracted. But they, these sheep are uh, people that travel across that area stop so that they have a chance to see the sheep and the sheep come up to them. Simply because on, the, on that area there, there is often um, an ice cream truck and people feed them to the sheep. Again, the sheep are on their own. There is no sign of anyone who is in charge of the sheep. Now that is something that uh, that I knew as a child because those sheep often ended up in, down in the, in the town and uh, they walk the streets and uh, check on the gates into people's gardens and. Uh, I often got in trouble with my grandfather for leaving the gate open because the sheep got in there and started eating the veggies that he had planted. So that he was not amused by that. So I know a lot about sheep. Something about sheep is that they they need something to follow. They follow each other. They uh, they just do that. They just follow each other. So if one goes in one direction. They all go in that direction. It's because they don't have any uh, anybody to take care of them, uh, they're left to their own devices, and so that's the way it is. Until either shearing time or lambing time. Twice a year, somebody, the farmer who owns the sheep, comes and with their dogs, rounds them up and drives them back to the farm so that they can shear them and uh, take any lambs to market or whatever. So growing up in Wales, I knew a lot about sheep, but shepherds, well I never really saw a shepherd. And it was sometime later in my life that I, I came across, I'm not sure if I can get it back. But I notice the difference between the sheep and the shepherd tunes in Wales and in Israel when I went there. Because that verse in Isaiah 40 is a verse that means a lot. That verse that mentions he tends his flock like a shepherd. Well, living in Wales, you, well, that means that they don't care for the sheep. They don't care, and except for twice a year. And in reality, and I had the privilege of going to Israel, and when I went to Israel, 
it was there that I understood the significance of what the Bible talks about when it talks about he tends his flock like a shepherd because there I discovered that the Bedouin were living very much as they have done over thousands of years and they had their flocks of sheep I did have a picture on the, on the screen but I, I'm not going to spend time looking for it but what I discovered was that the shepherd is with his sheep 24-7 they're never out of his sight in the morning they walk out to the hills and the sheep fall and then the young men would sit and just watch their sheep to make sure they're safe and they watch them all day and then in the evening time they would get up and walk they walk back to the tent and make sure that they end up in the fold that is there and all the sheep are counted back in and they discovered that the reason that happens is because of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. A totally different relationship. In Wales, the shepherd has no real contact with the sheep. But the Bedouin, as soon as a, a lamb is born, will take it in his arms so that it gets to know him. And so as this verse says, he gathers the lambs in his arms. That's the way the shepherd gets to know that young, newly born lamb. And then gives it back to the mother. But they spend time with their sheep. And the sheep get to know them. Totally different from my idea in Wales. Something else about sheep is that they they need to be cared for. Left to their own devices, they they have no defence of their own. They need someone to defend them. And that's another important thing when we consider the shepherd king we think of David who was chosen to be king but he was a shepherd first and foremost that was why God chose him to be king because he cared for the sheep he protected the sheep he put his life at risk in order to protect the sheep. And so we need to understand and we need to come to this wonderful place of knowing that we are cared for. Further on in Isaiah we read that all we like sheep have gone astray. And so it walked away but here I want us to focus on this verse, verse 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. He carries them close to his heart. He gen gently leads those that have young. You see, the real shepherd cares and watches and protects. David when he penned that Psalm 23, he said this. <coughs> he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. 
for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A reminder, David is reminded of the way in which he used the rod and the staff to protect the sheep. The staff to rescue, the rod to fight off any wild animal that would come to try and take the sheep. We, as sheep, need a shepherd. We, as sheep, need someone who cares for us. There are those we need to recognize that Jesus came into the world for us to be our shepherd. He came because God loved us. In John 10, we are reminded of the difference between someone who does not own the sheep and others. In John 10, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought them all out, all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. That's what I discovered. That's the way. We know the voice of God. We know that we want to follow him. But they'll never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And then he, he went further to say that he is the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd that does not own the sheep. So when he does the, sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. Here is Jesus introducing this idea of one flock, that the sheep that belong to him will be one. There won't be Jew and Gentile, there will just be one flock. He will be the shepherd that will lead it. Today we live in a day and age when people still are looking for leaders. But they're looking in the wrong direction then. We need to understand that we are able to help people to come into a relationship with Almighty God. That they can come and know Him personally. That He cares for them. For God so loved the world. Not just the Jews. God loved the world. Jesus came into the world for us. God sent his Son into the world for us to care for us. He tends his flock like a shepherd. Who is this shepherd? The one who is Jesus. He is more than just a shepherd. He is a king. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. 
when he taught the disciples the prayer. We pray your kingdom come, your will be done. Means we surrender to God and recognize that he is in control. The rest of Isaiah 40 reminds us of the greatness of God. The one who is a shepherd is the one who placed everything in, created all things. The one who holds, holds all things together. Many people today look and say that the universe is telling them, or the universe is influencing them, or I want to suggest we need to help people to recognize that it is the one who created the universe who is watching over and we can know him. We can't compare God to anything that we can make, but we can see in Jesus the very image of God. Paul, as he's writing to describe who Jesus is in, in Colossians, describes him in this way. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. The Son is the image of the invisible God. We continually need to focus on Jesus and see that he is the Good Shepherd. He lived his life demonstrating love for all. Demonstrating that whoever comes to him will not be cast off, will not be rejected, will be welcomed. It's a decision he does never forces his way upon us. She can choose to follow their shepherd or not. If they choose not to follow the shepherd, they get lost and inevitably the wild animals come and can kill them. But Isaiah is bringing us to this understanding and that God is the one who is going to care for us. God is the one who will watch over us. He is the one who gathers his flock, gathers his lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leaves those who have him. God knows each of us. He knows our situation and he knows exactly what we need. The shepherd knows his sheep and so he knows what the needs of each sheep is. The one who is the creator of the universe, through his Son, reveals himself to us and shows us his love, shows us that he cares for us. We can know no better one than Jesus. As I said, many people today are looking looking to find solutions by way of they think only of this world in which we live. They think only of the time that we live our lives here on the earth. But we need to understand that God is the eternal God, the everlasting God, the one who Isaiah says never slumbers. No slips. The reminder at the end of this chapter again reminds us of the difference it makes when we 
recognize God as our shepherd, Jesus as our shepherd. Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding no one can find. He gives strength to the weary. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Father. Here, Jesus is reminding us what Isaiah says here He gives strength to the weary. We can turn to God and we can know His strength. He helps us day by day. There is no one greater. We sang the greatest thing in all the world is loving you, serving you. We can. We can to know God. Our relationship with Him is as we focus on Him. The sheep need to keep an eye on the shepherd. As the shepherd moves, the sheep move. And the shepherd leads, the sheep follow. Rather than following other sheep, we need to follow the shepherd. We need to understand the difference it makes. It says he increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. The shepherd knows exactly what we need to give us the stamina to continue on. He loves us, wants the best for us. Then he says, they will soar on wings like eagles. You know, the realization that we can soar. In amongst all the troubles that we find during this pandemic, if we look to Jesus and see him as our shepherd, we can, as it were, lift up ourselves up and surrender to him. Open our wings and just allow him to lead us. Allow him to hold us up. I'm always amazed by the way in which the eagle, all it has to do is just, it doesn't flap like the hummingbird. It just keeps its wings open as it allows the wind, the current of the wind, to keep it where it is. It's just there effortless, allowing the power that is there to move it. And that's where we need to be. We need to open ourselves to God and allow Him by His Spirit to move us. Allow Him to lift us up above the problems and difficulties that we face. To look down from a different perspective. To see that He is the one who cares for us. He will lift us up. He will give us all that we need to live for Him. You know, it's... We in this part of the world have had it easy for many years as Christians. But times are getting tougher. And we may be facing difficulties because of things that we say that are consistent with the scripture. I don't know all I share, I believe, is what the scripture says. We know the world in which we live is ignoring the scripture, is ignoring God. The they think that they have the control over everything. They think we need to come to this place where we surrender to God, the one who created all things, the one who is in control of all things, and allow him 
to provide all that we need. He's all I need. I was hit this past week by being told that one of my grandchildren, one of my grandchildren, uh, was upset by something I said. I don't know what I said, but I'm sad. But you know, we need to hold firm to the scripture. We need to hold firm to what God's word teaches us. We need to know that he loves us, he cares for us. He doesn't, it's a choice that people make to accept him or reject him. The choice to reject is theirs. The choice to accept is ours. We accept him for who he is. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run not, not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You see, God will lift us up. God will help us through any difficulties we may have. We need to turn to him. We need to help other people to recognize that this pandemic is something that we have to deal with. But God still loves us. And we need to hear his voice. We need to keep focused. Don't get distracted. You know, when, when I was growing up in Wales, we had uh, milk delivered to us. And the person who delivered the milk had a horse and cart. And the horse had blinkers on. So that it was not distracted. But nothing, anything around him was not distracted. He knew the way ahead. We need to make sure that we, as it were, have blinkers. We close out those things that are not helpful to us. And open ourselves to God and all that He has for us. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Listen to what Jesus said. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father. A promise he has made for us as we follow him. He says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. That's exactly what Isaiah is showing that God is the one who is in control of all things. The God who is in control of all things tends his flock like a shepherd. He cares for his sheep. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have done. May we recognize that the one who is our shepherd is also the king. He has all power and all authority. King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus is our Saviour, he is our Lord, we as sheep need him, we need to welcome him, we need to acknowledge him, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths, my God, is a loving God. We have opportunity to help.
help people to come into relationship with Him through knowing Him as a shepherd, acknowledging that we are just sheep, needing a shepherd, and thanking Him for giving His life for us. May God help us to be more effective in our witness and to know Him, to keep following Him in all that we do. We've got to sing now a shelter in the time of storm. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever.